Our scripture reading this evening comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 20 through chapter 6, verses 10. I invite you now to hear the word with open ears and open mind and an open heart. So we are ambassadors who represent Christ. God is negotiating with you through us. We beg you as Christ's representatives, be reconciled to God. God caused the, caused the one who didn't know sin to be sin for our sake so that through him we could become the righteousness of God. Since we work together with him, we are also begging you not to receive the grace of God in vain. He says, I listened to you at the right time and I helped you on the day of salvation. Look, now is the right time. Look, now is the day of salvation. We don't give anyone any reason to be offended about anything so that our ministry won't be criticized. Instead, we commend ourselves as ministers of God in every way. We did this with our great endurance through problems, disasters, and stressful situations. We went through beatings, imprisonments, and riots. We experienced hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger. We displayed purity, knowledge, patience, and generosity. We served with the Holy Spirit, genuine love, telling the truth and God's power. We carried the weapons of righteousness in our right hand our le and our left hand. We were treated with honor and dishonor and with verbal abuse and good evaluation. We were seen as both fake and real, as unknown and well-known, as dying, and look, we are alive. We were seen as punished, but not killed, as going through pain, but always happy, as poor, but making many rich, and as having nothing but owning everything. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Tonight, we also begin our Les Miserables series, and the series is based on, uh, is main, based mainly on the recent film, uh, which is based on the musical, which is based on the book by uh, Victor Hugo. So how many of y'all have ever seen the musical before? Raise your hand. Yeah. Uh, anybody seen the movie? Raise your hand. Yeah, about the same. <laughs> Look about the same. Anybody, uh, anybody read the book? Anybody? Oh, a few of you have read the book. Y'all are doing better than I am. That's awesome. Uh, my, my grandfather, when, when my grandfather died, I, uh, I looked at his uh, bedside table where he kept all of his favorite books. And he had a, a book on how to remodel model, uh, model A's, Model A Fords. Amen? Amen? And uh, he had some other, some other books, some, fun, some humor books and some things like that. But one of the books that was on his bedside table was Victor Hugo's Les Miserables. And uh, so it was important to him, and I, I love the story. And even if you've never heard it before, I think you'll, I think you'll really in, enjoy it. Uh, the story is set in, in 19th century France, in 19th century France. And uh, Victor Hugo himself said that the story is, and this is a quote, uh, from one end to the other, in its entirety and details, a progress from evil to good, from injustice to justice, from falsehood to truth, from night to day, from appetite to injustice, uh, excuse me, from appetite to conscience, from corruption to life, from hell to heaven, from nothingness to God. The starting point matter, destination the soul, the hydra at the beginning, the angel at the end. And that's very appropriate as we begin our Lenten series. So let's begin with the movie at the beginning. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, you who are our strength and our friend, our rock and our redeemer. And the people of God said, amen. So after his release from prison, Jean Valjean takes his parole papers to begin a new life. And we're going to watch now what happened when he tried to find work and make a new beginning. Isn't it true that the more we try to make a new beginning for our lives, the more the world tries to keep us in our place? We get a small taste of freedom, but then people put us back in chains. They don't allow us to become the person 
that God wants us to be. And we see that time and time again. The employee who improves things at work only to see them go right back the way they were before. Or the spouse who tries to make their marriage work but then gets sucked right back into the dysfunction. Or the addict who gets clean in rehab only to fall back into the same old patterns of behavior once they return home. We look up and we catch a glimpse of, a glimpse of heaven only to be knocked right back down into the mud. And it's easy to get bitter. It's easy to give in to our baser instincts because we have that same tension in our hearts. Somebody has said, I think it was Carl Sandburg said, that there's an eagle in me that wants to soar, and there's a hippopotamus in me that wants to waller in the mud. Amen? We have that same tension in our hearts. I mean, you ever just want to waller in your sin? I, I know I've been there. Uh, you ever cling to your grudges? You ever hold on to your anger or your bitterness or your rage? You ever get stuck in your own mess? No, certainly not any of us here. That's all other people. Amen? Um, well, there is a better way. And Paul points to it in our scripture reading tonight. In, in tonight's scripture reading, Paul begs us to get right with God and with one another. Because in the end, the only thing that ever really lasts is God's grace. Is what? Is God's grace. The only thing that ever lasts is God's grace. God's grace is what breaks our chains and frees us to serve. I say it at every grave. I may say it at yours someday. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And for at least 1,400 years, Christians have gathered for 40 days before Easter, to remember that in life and in death, nothing lasts except God's grace. And so we come tonight to confess with our hearts that we have often been set on the wrong things. So tonight begins 40 days of looking up. And tonight begins 40 days of spending more time in prayer. And tonight begins 40 days of taking less for ourselves and giving more to others. Tonight begins 40 days of letting go of our anger and of our guilt and of our shame. So let us begin by confessing our sin to God in silence. I'm going to invite Pete to come and lead us in prayer. As Hammett has said, we will begin in a moment of silent prayer. So I invite you now to pray with me. God is loving and merciful. God does not want us to die in our sins, but to turn away from evil and live. God is ready to accept our repentance, forgive our sins, and restore us to life in the name of Jesus Christ. We are forgiven. Amen. I now invite you to join with me in reciting our, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is 40 days of preparation and prayer and fasting and reconciliation. Uh, Lent is both a time to take up and to put down. And we take up the things that, make, that will bring us closer to God, and we put away the things that keep us from being close to God. I always say that uh, I, think, I think it's fine if you want to give up chocolate for Lent. Amen. Uh, um, if that keeps you from being close to God, I know it does some, some folks. Um, but I, I suspect that what God really wants us to do is give up things like hate and anger and being judgmental and holding grudges and gossip and all of those other horrible things that Paul names in the New Testament. Amen? The hard ones. The hard ones. The hard ones. Chocolate is easy compared to those. Amen? As long as it's not coffee. <laughs> so I do invite you to, uh, in the name of the church, to observe a holy Lent. Uh, examine yourselves and repent. Pray, fast, deny yourself, read and meditate upon God's holy word. I'm going to invite Pete to come as we give thanks for the ashes. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes remind us that our lives are short of our need to change. Help us remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.